Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey, hey, guys. If you haven't already watched the second season, my points might not be worth it to you, but regardless, these are my thoughts about how the season both somewhat got better and somewhat did worse than the first season, but in amongst the plethora of doo-doo that this show has, there are some parts that did do better and there are some parts that were far worse than the first season. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what I thought did best and I'll work my way down to what was the absolute worst. And trust me, when I get to that part, I'm going to be so fucking furious. <laughs> the best part of the show for season two, I would definitely say, is the dwarves once again. While the whole corruption of King Durin the Third is a bit quick, some might say it's actually probably the best paced story of the entirety of this second season. Following the creation of the rings from uh, Sauron or Anatar and Celebrimdum making the rings and giving the seven to the dwarves. And then King Durin is using his ring to fix what has happened to Casa Doom after the eruption of evil. They do work the idea of the rings being a means of combating the darkness that is happening throughout Middle Earth somewhat well. Like it's far less MacGuffin y than it was at the end of the first season, but it's still MacGuffin y sort of. But it works pretty decently in terms of the relationship between Durin. Uh, and his son, Durin, Durin the Fourth, they were the best part of the show. The relationship between those two, also his wife, Disa, I, I, she's still one of my favorite characters in this whole show because, by God, she actually has a character and there's elements to her. There's funny, there's humor, there's humility, there's uh, just this great relationship with her and Durin. And just the whole story with Durin's corruption, while being a little bit quick, it's a great, cool little look into the greediness of dwarves. Are the dwarves affected by the rings in the books? No, they're not. And that is, again, the work of Patrick McDumdum and John D. Dumdum. But I'm going to choose the best. I'm going to see the best of the turd sandwich as it is. And I really enjoyed the... the dialogue between the two Durins, the relationship, and then Owen Arthur is killing it. Apologies if I got that wrong as uh, Durin the Fourth. He's still being the best character of this entire show. While admittedly a bit quick and definitely not lore accurate, it's still probably the best part of the show still. And moving into the next kind of best part of the show, but also with its issues, is Anatar and Celebrimbor. Celebrimbor, I also like to call Celebrim dumb quite a bit in this because there are a lot of moments, despite the fact that Charles Edwards is a pretty commendable actor and he does the best he can with a lot of the dialogue, and there are even moments that are straight from the relationship between him and Anatar from the appendices in the books. There are a lot of moments you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe they said that. It, there's a lot of times where he feels like it's cringe of power because there are some lines, like fucking Anatar actually says... The Lord of the Rings. But I do like seeing Charles Vickers really get to do the mask off thing. Because they tried that terrible fucking mystery box bullshit with Sauron. Where everyone and anyone knew exactly who he was the instant he was introduced. And McDumdum and Pain Dum Dum thought they were so smart. But they weren't. They were not smart at all. And supposedly they say they learned lessons from the first season's reactions. But... We'll see how that goes. But seeing him manipulate Celebrimbor, manipulate people around him, the only person who seems to just like straight up see his shit is Durin the Fourth. I did enjoy Vickers really getting to delve into that evil, and he is definitely one of the best parts of the show to the point where if, like, in terms of even major publications, Forbes' review, he's the only thing that they said that was positive about it. You want a fucking lambasting look at the review by uh, on Forbes. Like, holy shit, that guy was angry watching this show. While Celebrimbor's kind of fall into madness and to manipulation, again, has some moments of, Ugh. it does work well to a point where I actually thought his character's arc from beginning to end was done well and even his end is also done well now now we're going to start to get into a little bit of the criticisms that's with elrond and with galadriel now we all had major complaints about how uh clark was portraying the character and she was 
admittedly kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place between the terrible writing for her and to be honest just not the greatest casting she still is not really nailing that character of Galadriel. She still hasn't got it. Admittedly, she's far less fucking irritating than she was in the first season. Doesn't really have that Galadriel aspect to it. And she's also a giant goddamn hypocrite for a good portion of the beginning of the season to the point where like, you know, what? you were dead set on trying to kill this fucking dude. And now you're like, oh, the readings is like, I understand what they're trying to do with the writing, but it's still dumb. However, Elrond played by young uh, Rob Stark is still a great casting. He has melded even better into that character the, through this season. And I like a lot of the dialogue he had. There were some moments that were really stupid, like, hey, we got to go to Cull of Mimbor. Um, we're not going to give you any horses, though. Run. Oh, no, there's things that are happening. Okay, we got to run back, and then we'll come back with the entire fucking cavalry. We, we apparently needed those five horses up until now for this dramatic bit, which the Battle of Aragion... There's some good parts and there's some bad parts. There's some very strange uh, strategy. Once again, a little bit on the latter half of Game of Thrones. The fact that none of the elves see the orcs clearly setting up shop across the rivers. Well, what's the elf's eyes see? Apparently jack shit, um, according to plot. The battle itself kind of, uh, like how it starts with the cavalry coming up to the orcs and Adar just reveals Galadriel is like, oh my god, you're actually not going to do this. You're not going to actually do this. Along, Aside from the fact that they were doing a cavalry charge, you guys are known for bow and fucking arrow. What the fuck are you doing? Like These guys are just proving that they are think woo, 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 rather than actual think, think, think. The battles that happen through the first and the second age, they're brutal. There's not that many good victories. And that's because they're just overwhelmed by sheer chaos. Not just orc or numbers, but by monsters and demons and all of these things. And instead in this show, they're being defeated through pure fucking idiocy. The fucking end fight, so much cringy dialogue in that bit. And they're still trying to, sh they're still trying to shove that whole ooh, romance bullshit between the two of them. And it's so cringy. It's still very bad. It's still very poorly written. But... Despite how bad it is, Charles Vickers is still doing the best he goddamn can, and he still makes it somewhat enjoyable. That's a credit to this dude doing the best he can with the garbage that he has on his plate. The whole bit with the elves is, uh, and especially the ending where they're like, yeah, we're still gonna fight, guys. It's like, we only lost several thousand of us, and our armies are splintered, and we lost one of our greatest cities ever, and one of our greatest elves, like literally the grandson of Feanor. But don't worry, we'll, we'll win next time. Now, the second worst part of the show was Walmart brand Gandalf, dollar store Gandalf. This story goes absolutely fucking nowhere, even with Tom Bombadil, which I will say, very good casting. The guy who is doing Tom Bombadil, great. Even if some of the dialogue's fucking cringe, when it's straight from the books or straight from Peter Jackson's movies, which I don't know how they're getting around that bullshit because there are some lines that are not from the books that are in those movies and those lines are in this show. And sometimes the lines that he's saying don't make sense to the situation. They're just, ooh, you remember that? Regardless, the guy playing Tom Bombadil is an enjoyable actor. I liked his participation in it. And they even liked that they played one of the songs. They sang one of the songs, even though the song doesn't make sense to play it there. That bit was the most enjoyable bit of the Gandalf story because the Gandalf story is terrible. It is so uneventful. It is so unimportant to the plot. You've got this dark wizard who is not, shouldn't be Saruman, but also Gandalf shouldn't be Gandalf. You had this great element to use the blue dwarves but that would correct that would require being a decent writer which these two dum-dums are not so we get what we get the fact that brandy foot went with him and by the end of the season the fact that nori and poppy just go back to the clan of uh of hobbits that will kill you and leave you to die if you break a fucking foot instead of, you know, being hobbits, they just proved that they had no idea what to do with this storyline. They knew how to start it, and then that was it. They knew how to write the first five pages, and then they didn't know how to do anything else. Because by the end of the season, the, the Gandalf storyline goes literally fucking nowhere except he gets a stick, and you find out that apparently is like Grand Elf, like which, which again, so cringe. It's just so uneventful. There's nothing that's happening with that story. But despite the fact that it's boring and nothing's happening, it is still not the worst part of, of this season. The absolute dog shit 
part of the... Wait, actually, hang on. There's one more person. It's Sealdor. The Sealdor's sort of in this season. You're watching him go from surviving the battle, despite the fact we all knew he wasn't dead, even though they try to say, oh no, he might be dead. And then on this stupid uh, love triangle thing, that, and in the end it doesn't mean anything because then he just gets on a boat to go back to Numenor. So it went nowhere. But as far as some people have speculated, the lady who he likes might become his actual wife. And then the guy that she's going to uh, cock block or blue ball could become the... Uh, the king of the mountain, but that's a lot of speculation. But you know, I don't know. These guys have never written anything that wasn't predicted miles in advance, so we'll see. Now comes the worst bit. Now comes the absolute cringe and hate I have for this show of at least the second season. The story of Numenor was absolutely butchered. The only good part of this is Elendil, played by Lloyd Owen. Absolutely kills what I would perceive to be the elements of Elendil. And even with all of the awful fucking writing that's happening all around him, he still did the character, the great stoicism that is deserved of the character. And he did pretty good with the absolute giant pile of shit he was given because the Numenor storyline is some of the worst writing the show has ever had. If you thought the elves are going to take our jobs bit from the first season was bad, that was the goddamn appetizer to the shit buffet souffle that you get from this season. There's this complete ridiculous amount of hierarchy changing going on between a Farazan and the Queen Regent. And it it goes back and forth between a giant bird flying into a room and being like, oh, that means something apparently to her going and talking to a big fish. And oh, that means something to Farazan literally coming into a room with a piece of paper being like, oh yeah, you know, uh, everything that the, the big fish said, uh, um, uh, I take back, Uno reverse card. That was some of the worst writing and considering the corruption of Numenor is such a cool bit that is supposed to have Sauron be a part of it it was so poorly delivered it was on the stage of fucking fan fiction where the same 30 people were in a room going oh for this person and then the next episode oh no actually I changed my mind oh for this person uh, and then the next episode oh actually wait I go back to my original decision oh is some of the worst writing like no no means of subtlety all of the subtlety is taken away there's no known means of how to actually deliver development through character choices character actions character development character emotion it's just oh and this happened and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens but no actual discernible means and how one goes through the other other than the fact that it happens on screen and then there is cause and effect that is because it needs to happen for the next dumb fucking thing to happen. It was terrible. The fact that Farazan literally uproots the entirety of Elendil's uh, guard and the Queen Regent with a piece of paper that one dude reads and he's like, oh, this apparently means that she's in league with Sauron. Hey, how did you come across this information, by the way? It wouldn't have happened to have been the ball thing that, you know, you gave everyone shit about using. There's elements there. That's the problem, is that the elements are there. The pieces are there to do this story correctly, but they do them all wrong. They do them terribly. They ruin it. They ruin it. And I have no idea how they're going to do any more of this in season three. It will be worse. I guarantee you it will be worse. Because while... Sauron leaves Eregion in ruins. He's now got the Orc army back uh, through Adar, which, I don't know, Adar's thing was kind of okay in this season. He was all right. Seeing him die in the way that Sauron died at the beginning of the show was like, ooh, look at the full picture. And then the whole Orcs having families thing. It only affected this one dude, this one ugly dude, which, oh, okay, one other good thing about this, the prosthetic effects for all the Orcs. They definitely at least listen to that one major complaint about the Hobbit. All of the orcs are in makeup. And it all looked great. It actually looked really, really good. So there you go. There's a lot of things that they did terrible again. There are some things that they did better than the first time. And there are some things that they even did worse. Whereas the first season, nothing really happens. Like quite literally, nothing happens. The most eventful bit is Mordor being revealed via PowerPoint. But there isn't an actual 
thing that really catalyzes anything other than the really bad twists of season one. This season actually had some development in terms of plot progression. You had the whole bit with the rings being made by Sauron or Anatar and Celebrimbor. You had the destruction of Region. You had the uh, decimation of, almost near decimation of khazad and the dying of King Durin III with the very, very poorly put in, like, oh oh elements of King Durin IV's uh, eventual battle for clemency or for the kingship. That's going to be in the season three, and I'm really worried that they're going to handle that story just as poorly as they did Numenor. So ugh. the Astildor storyline would be nice to have actually go good, uh, but he's still played by a pretty terrible actor, in my opinion, Maximum Baldry. Uh, he sucks. He's a very bad actor. At least he has not proven himself to be good, but he's still not as bad as the kid playing Theo. That kid's fucking useless. Oh, um, and then a Rondir. Actually, technically speaking, probably the most stoic and lore accurate elf of this entire show. Dude did nothing. He also somehow survived MacGuffin stabs. Like you thought he got killed, or at least very poorly uh hurt, or very, very, very gravely wounded by Adar. And then in the next episode, he's fine. Like nothing happened. Like barely an inconvenience. <laughs> Some of the consistency of this show, Upper Echelon, who very good uh, investigative journalist, at least from what I've seen from his stuff about video games and whatnot. He did a video talking about that one elf that, you know, shoots the arrow. But if you rewatch the scene, you can see just how terrible the consistency is with her arrows because she all of a sudden gets hit by six arrows. But in between cuts, arrows that are in her shoulder disappear and arrows that are in her legs disappear, but then they come back in certain cuts and then they go away again in certain cuts. It's some really bad consistency. There's usually script supervisors that are supposed to be doing their jobs to make sure that doesn't happen, but clearly they were uh, not on set that day or they just didn't give a shit. You already have one of the actresses. Who was the one who was supposed to be the love interest for a Rondier? She left the show because apparently she didn't want to be a part of it, and they didn't even bother to recast her, which, I mean, you had that one element going, but apparently they're like, no. It's being made for the sake of being made rather than actual passion behind it. Jackson and Philippa Boyd and Fran Walsh all proved that they had pure fucking passion for the fe- for Tolkien's world. Putting in things like the ruins of Arrakeon and the Fellowship of the Ring, you wouldn't know it unless you knew or unless you could, like, decipher that, but they're there because they cared, and... Patrick McCain and John D. Payne, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, have proven that they don't know how to write shit. And they will continue to prove that as this show goes on. And I only pray for this show when it comes to an end, and it will just kind of be a passing in the night. The fact that there's been so much money that has been put into this, and it is still as uh, as it is, it's only been out for like what's it the, the, the season ended like less than a month ago no one's talking about it it's like that shows you guys just how poorly the show is doing by the way uh they like to say that oh it was the most watched show of the thing did anyone else notice that when you booted up amazon that it literally would put um the rings of power in your uh, recently watched even though you hadn't they did every algorithmic uh, trick under the fucking sun to make you want to watch the show. They were nearly on the same level of uh, of shadiness that they did for the first season, but even more so. Because I remember when I came home and I was like, hey, what the fuck? Um, I have not watched Rings of Power since the season ended. That's kind of uh, convenient that it's in my uh, continue watching. It's unfortunate because there are people in here you can tell that care. Um, the guy who plays uh, Charles Edwards, you can tell he cares. The guy who plays Caleb Brimboard, despite the fact that he's, I don't know, he's kind of an eh, actor, he proved during a lot of interviews, Benjamin Walker proved that he knows the stuff. He could recite the po- the ode of the poem of Caleb Brimboard uh, from memory. Uh, final rating for Rings of Power season two. I'm going to give it, again, a three out of seven. Much like the first season. I would actually probably give the first season two. But I feel like this is like the Halo show. The the Halo show's first season was dreadful. And then the second season, while making a lot of the same mistakes, still had some improvement. But yeah, either way, 
those are my thoughts. Very long-winded. I apologize for speaking as long as I did, but I hope I gave some interesting information. I hope I gave some interesting insight into it. And now I want to hear what you guys had to say about it. What did you guys think about it? Did you guys watch it? Were you guys watching Nerd of the Rings videos while it was coming out? I was. And I just loved how he was trying to be positive or even just trying to be... He's a pretty cheerful fellow. He's probably one of the happiest fellows on YouTube. And you could just tell that he's like, hey, this doesn't make sense. This is kind of dumb. <laughs> so... Yeah, if you guys haven't watched any of his videos, or whether about the show or about Lord of the Rings in general, I absolutely would recommend it. He's a fantastic dude on that end. But either way, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're more, subscribe. And until then, we'll we'll see you guys when season three eventually comes about, because you know what's gonna happen. Anyways, see you guys later.